It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Welcome. You're listening to Bucked Up with Sam Buck. vibe you get when I see you it's like the cranberries <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like when I see you I'd be like yo this dude knows all his alternative pop music from the 90s that's when I see you <laughs> that was my like depressing years of like 13 through 16 I used to listen to all that shitty alternative music and now I'm just full hip-hop again. I feel like you know Alanis Morissette for sure <laughs> like, like I feel like yo, you you'd be fucking with her like hard body yeah, I just hate <laughs> sick dogs so What's good, bro? What's going on? Thank you for being on Bucked Up. This is a self-help podcast from someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. And um, I'm happy to have you on here. I've known you for a really long time. You were one of the first people in the comedy scene I really uh, met. Yeah. I um, I had no friends when I was 16. I was just listening to Alana Morissette. <laughs> and uh, I would go to Laugh Boston every single weekend and see shows and uh, you were the bouncer there. Yeah, yeah. I was the. Uh, you were the muscle. <clears throat> I was the muscle. I was the. Uh, I was the first line of entry, you know, <laughs> and the last line in the last line of uh, exit. You yeah, know, you were things, things fucking get a little crazy. Up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a uh, yeah. For most people who don't know, like my start in comedy was uh, working at a comedy club um, at uh, Laugh Boston when it first opened and. Uh, I was like the I had like many hats, but ultimately like I was the like security, like senior. Yeah. Senior. I guess you would say if I want to put a label on, it, if I was like someone would be like if he was ever important there, I want to be I want to be labeled as a senior security advisor. There. I will only <laughs> label you as senior security able from now on. <laughs> exactly. But um, were yeah, you doing man, mics man. while you were working there, or did you start yeah. working there and then do mics? I was already kind of like doing mics at that time, you know. But I wanted to kind of, um, I always had a interest in like the business of comedy, mm -hmm. you know, just because um, <clears throat> I just, I don't know, my mind's always thought like business from, from a business standpoint. Yeah. I, I like business. I like how, you know, how to create businesses and things like that. So I was, as much as I love being a stand-up comedian and like trying to be a good one, my the same interest and the same energy was also focused on like the business of comedy as well. So I said, what better way to know or, or I don't know or where to start by working at a comedy club? And that's the perfect place. Well, <laughs> you also, other than being a comedian, you're another reason I wanted to get you on here is your marketing is fantastic. I mean, you started Comics to Cure. You have the Ready, Set, Blow with Randy. Like, you really get out there mm -hmm. and know how to market yourself from a business standpoint. And I think that's where a lot of, um, I don't want to speak for people, but comedians fall off is they don't know how to put themselves out there. Y yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, at the same time, you know, for me, I, I learned those things through experience, like my previous life before comedy. Because, mm -hmm. you know, because I started comedy late in, in, in terms of age-wise for most comedians. How old were you? I was 30, 31. Um, I had, like, many previous lives before that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had many, many, like, cool-ass experiences and bad, real bad experiences, mm -hmm. and, you know, so which led me to wanted to talk about it on stage. But what is that, like, you're seven years in the game now? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's always, like, an there's al I always answer that in, in, two, in two answers mm -hmm. because there's, I, cause I, I, it comes in as two questions to me. It's, like, initially, like, when you – when you started stand-up comedy, and then the the second one is like when you started doing stand-up comedy. Mm, that's a really good point. Yeah. So for me, it was like you know the first three years, even probably f yeah, yeah, the first three years was like three and a half years. It's like yeah, I'm getting up, but not not like that. You know, I'm hanging out more. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to understand the scene, making friends, stuff like that. So I'm not really f like getting up every day. Like I didn't go hard right away from the beginning you know i kind of took my time like yeah you know just because you know i that's just what it, i guess that's what it was and i guess i've heard like other comedians have kind of like said the same thing that happened with me i did stand up for the first time when i was 17 
And then I didn't, I only did it like two, three, maybe six times up until I turned 21. And that's when I just started doing it as much as I can uh, before quarantine, eight to 10 mics a week. Yeah. But uh, the first time I did stand up, and this will end in a question, but the first time I did stand up was on Kill Tony at the comedy store. My uh, mom bought me a fake ID because it's a 21 plus club. I saw that. I saw that on your uh, on your social media. Yeah. I was like, uh, it surprised me because I didn't know you were wanting to do it or you had an interest. Because when I first met you, you know, you were a kid. You couldn't even drink. You couldn't even like legally get into like a club. No, know? I had to like kind of finesse my way in. Right. So I was like, uh, but then you told me how old you were. <clears throat> and you always like kept on coming to shows and you would buy tickets, always kept coming to shows. And I know you told me initially, like you were, you said uh, you were going to school to be like, you was directing, like you want to be like producing and directing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, the first thing that like, came to my mind like what? when you told me that, bro, and don't take this like anything wrong, but I was like, like, I didn't care about you directing. You know, everybody it was, really love everybody. it was like, damn, this nigga's going to put me in a movie one day. <laughs> <laughs> Flash, flash forward six years and you're on my podcast, motherfucker. There's no movie. This is 20 views on YouTube. Got him. Nigga, not me. You slacking, bro. <laughs> Pick up the pace, bro. You got shit to do. I know. I, t- I don't got that many years left. Dog. <laughs> I did go to school to study film and I had the worst film teacher. I remember going to him and being like, these are the types of films I want to make. And he's like, I don't really like those directors. I can't do nothing for you. And I was like, Fuck. Like, I guess yeah. I guess my dreams killed. Really? And I loved comedy, and I always was going to shows, but I don't know. It's probably the reason you started late. I was too scared. Like, I didn't think I had anything to say. Well, yeah, Not that I still yeah, have anything to say. It's like, it's a mixture of a lot of things, man. It's fear. <clears throat> you know, it's like, why? It's like the common question, like, why, why people don't chase after their dreams? You know? Mm-hmm. That's like a common thing. That, that's like a real thing. That's not like no fucking, you know every Super Bowl once a year type marketing idea thing or no. philosophy that comes into your head. Like, people think about that all the time. It's not my idea, but we talk about that on this podcast. Is Stephen Pressfield's idea of resistance, where it's like there's just a, the voice in your head that holds you back is resistance, and the hardest thing you can do in life is fight that voice. Sure, sure, yeah. And, and you, have to be, you have to have a certain level of optimism, you know, in your life. Or view of like of life, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like to 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 think that way. So, um, but yeah, but <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, anyways, like yeah, like so I started as a comedy club uh, security guy, and then uh, just learned the business. Made you know, made connections. You know, treated treated like headliners like really good. Made mm-hmm. sure that they felt like, hey, you know, what what do you need? I checked on them. Like, you need a drink. Like. Everything's okay. You know, just not bothering them, but just making sure, like, they felt... Of course. You know, cared pre- for. Cared for, and, you know, obviously, you could tell by my stature, protected. <laughs> yeah, because you're a senior <laughs> security <laughs> able. <laughs> so, Did you ever have to? Was there, like, any crazy things? Because I never really saw... I saw one guy charge Rogan, but that was the only time I saw anything crazy yeah. at the left Boston. Yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> there have been times where, you know, it was... Uh, there was no like ever no physical fights or anything like mm-hmm. that. Actually, it was one. There was one time, but it wasn't at a comedy show. It was at like a, because they do, or they I guess they you know they do events. They do events there like outside mm-hmm. from comedy. You know, like yeah. that's not comedy related. They do you know because they rent the space out to other companies who want to lease the space mm-hmm. for things or whatever. Right. Aside from that time, nah, I never. But because. Cause bro, I don't, I don't play no games, man. Like You're senior I, security, I'm You're senior not. security dog. Like, <laughs> no shit's going down under your watch. Bro, no, I'm not. You know, and then plus, I just know how to handle myself in those situations. Yeah, based on my previous life, like you know, like I'm not no, I ain't no punk. Was there? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like uh, yeah. I ain't no punk. I am. A punk. I will. <laughs> exactly, I'll, exactly. I'll let anything happen to me, and I'm like, sorry. <laughs> uh, was there a time in your life? Or that you just flipped that switch where you're like, I'm not going to listen to Resistance anymore. I'm going after your, uh, going after my dream. Yeah, yeah. It was like, uh, like the fourth, be- like when I started Comics to Cure. That's when I was like, you know, that with basically it was a, uh, you know, I decided, hey, how do I, se- how am I going to separate myself from the pack? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't even about getting better as a comic, you know, like, which is, should be the, in my opinion, the more realistic 
first thing you should do mm-hmm. is try to get it as good as you can. You know what I'm saying? As as fast as you can. Um, well, not as fast as you can, but as long as it takes to get really good, and then everything sh- falls in place, right? Just work as hard as you can. Don't push yourself too hard, but give yourself as much effort. Right. Exactly. So, but I, you know, <clears throat> thought about it in this way. I said, you know, how do I separate myself where I can make networks and and give comedians a place to also work, you know, and also separate themselves from the pack as well, because. The, the types of shows that I was able to produce, you know, with my friend, Brandy Valerio, who does my podcast, who co-hosts my podcast, our podcast, uh, Ready, Set, Blow podcast. Um, we were able to produce shows of high quality and bring in really high quality acts. I remember one of your first shows you had Donnell Rawlings on, and that was the first time I had seen him live. Yeah, Donnell oh, Rawlings. Shout out, shout out D. Shout out Donnell, you know? Shout uh, out, yes. But that was an amazing <laughs> Comics to Cure show. And was that your first one? The or? first one, no. The first one what actually wasn't that, uh, Donnell. Uh, the first one it was like my first ever, and that was uh, I produced it and funded it like 100% myself. Um, <clears throat> I... Um, <laughs> a lot of the comedians that I had on my first Comics to Cure show mm-hmm. are on TV right now or writing for Saturday Night Live. Oh, wow. Like like Sam J. Is like uh, a shout out, out to like Sam J. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. She was one of the other comedians that I met. She has a Netflix special. The trailer just came out yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 3 a.m. Uh, I, think, no, I think her special comes out in August. Yeah, Sam. the trailer. The, oh, the trailer, trailer just okay, came yeah. out. Um, yeah, yeah. 3 a.m. Sure. Summer Nights, I think it's. Uh, yep, Summer Nights. Yeah. 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 Um, so I I started stand up I started like with Sam you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like I, mean, I think Sam might have done a little bit before me but I think but I met I was introduced to her as she as we were playing like the comedy studio and mm-hmm. you know like Dick Storty like you probably weren't around at that time you definitely weren't around at that time I don't think no not there yeah but um so yeah like Sam J like you know I had her on my show I have uh, Langston Kerman he's so funny yeah like you know that I I I started under him like he start you know and. I always respected him because he was just like his. He was like just original. He was cool. I, when I think of Langston Kerman, I'm like, yo, that guy's cool, you know, cool and funny. And then um, amazing writer. Uh, his album Light Skin Feelings is one of my favorite albums. Yeah, to yeah. listen to. Yeah, shout out Langston. He's working hard right now. He's out in L.A. doing his thing. I just heard him on Comedy Bang Bang. Yeah, man. He's he's, he's, he's he's the man. He's the man. I respect him a lot. Um, cool, cool dude. Um, and uh, yeah, Langston, Kerman, Sam J. I had on the show. I had you know uh, Dan Bolger, mm-hmm. uh, who's you know obviously you know hilarious, uh, hilarious in in Boston comedy. Um, and you and Randy, when did you guys kind of meet? Because you're a pair now, and you guys have such a good chemistry on your podcast. I know you shout it out, but shout out Ready Set Blow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, my boy uh, Randy. You know what I'm saying we we come from kind of the same era. You know, mm-hmm. like we're we we 80s babies, but made like kind of grown up lived in the 90s you know what i'm saying so we got a little old school to us but but you know we come from kind of two different things you know like he's uh he, two different lifestyles you know what i'm saying two different lives like italian guy you know well he's a uh, half uh, he's half dominican half uh, you know half like he's mixed he's biracial mm-hmm. uh, you know so um he grew up in queens and like tough part of queens new york you know what i'm saying um <clears throat> he made it out of queens you know and then you know went to brown university you know what i'm saying wow. like Smart guy, smart dude. You know what I'm saying. And then had a pretty, pretty fantastic career in finance, high level finance in New York oh, City, wow. and was making shitloads of money. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying. And he was, just, and he came to a point where he met me, and I was like, he was, he loved comedy so much. He always, he always had a passion for comedy, but he just didn't pull the trigger. You know, he always like, yeah, I want to do comedy. I want to do stand up. Like, I've always been doing it. So. And then he quit, and then now he's a comedian, and we do a whole bunch of shit together. When I met him, so uh, and he's he's out in L.A. now, and you guys do your podcasts yeah, yeah, together. Still, so you're like 208 episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 208. And yeah, 208. We're about four years coming up. You yeah. guys are both the business minded, comedy minded. You guys are a good partnership. Well, yeah, we just you know we're just lucky to f- you know he 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 was at a show that I was performing at the comedy studio. He was mm-hmm. just taking it. You know he he didn't even know that I didn't. We just talked, and he. You know, you, when you meet when you meet somebody, um, I mean, we're not we're not dating or anything. I make it sound like we're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> when you look <laughs> deeply, when you look if deeply you into were, your partner's no eyes, no one would care. Everybody love everybody, <laughs> right? I, know, I was like, I'm t- yo, you guys, I your podcast might blow up more if it was. Yo, bro. <laughs> for a sec, yo, for a sec, I just stopped myself. Like, yo, I'm talking about this motherfucker too much. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, you know, so let me chill. When son. you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know Talk some shit real quick, and then you can go back into the yeah. niceties. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man. You know, we just came from two different lifestyles. You know, became friends, real good friends, business partners, and all that. And uh, we've had dope, dope guests on our podcast. You know, we've, you know, we were able to, for you know, for for the level of like, you know, where we're at in comedy mm-hmm. didn't really match. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, in this business, you know... I understand you're on my podcast. (laughs) 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 Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, There is a certain... You know, there's a leverage... There's a a certain game to this, you know, leverage game to this, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know. um, And we've never really treated people with any type of, like... I've never been the type of person where I'm not going to talk to because you're not of a certain status or anything you, know? you were so friendly to me i was a 16 year old kid coming to laugh boston just loved comedy i never went with anyone i'd always go by myself and you'd always come and talk to me you were always that way even before i was a comedian or anything you really that's mm-hmm. how it was i know yeah. you wanted to be in my movie but dreams don't turn out though that way yeah i don't i mean i've I haven't really put faith in uh in me, in certain people these days, <laughs> in in pilgrim wipes, <laughs> yeah. you know, you don't trust the pilgrim uh, wipes. Yeah, no, no, the pilgrim wipes is the only race that we should trust. <laughs> I, I do not I was condone telling, what I was telling fucking like, yo, like, bro, out of all the white people, like the pilgrim wipes never get smoked, son. <laughs> they never get smoked. They are good. I've never heard anybody talk shit about the pilgrims ever. <laughs> Irish and for sure, now. you know, <laughs> like Italian, we know, it's whatever. There's groups of every, you know, everyone yeah. hates each other these days. Whatever, like you know, it's <laughs> like, you know what I mean. But the pilgrims never, p- pilgrims are on a fucking platinum po- on pedestal for white people, bro. We should knock them down a few pegs. We got goofy hats and buckles on our shoes. Nah, son. we don't know what we're doing. Nah, bro. <laughs> Nah, I fuck with the pilgrims all day. All day. <laughs> the Oreo, the Oreo looking fucking outfits and shit, you know, <laughs> like cookies and cream outfits, the black and white. I could fuck with that. So what were you doing? You said you started stand up at thirty. What were you doing before that? Like what what happened that made you like nah, it's stand up now? Uh, my, my the the last real job that I had before I did stand up, I was in finance as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, but um, so a lot, you lot are lower a level, a lot lower level than Randy. But I was, you know. <laughs> But uh, I still I was in like financial services. I was I was retirement specialist. Mm. So I you know I I was uh, you know worked in that field you know with money and teaching people about the stock market. You know mutual fund stocks, how to trade them, like you know yeah small shit, but kind of like whatever. Still ahead of like the most average person in America. Totally. <laughs> like you know what I mean? So um, because I don't know anything about I didn't know anything about money before that. You know, but uh, that. And that's what I did for about three years. And then prior to that, I had fucking shitty jobs, man, bro. I used to work at fucking Valvoline, bro. <laughs> like, bro, like, seriously, dog? Like, you know where you had life has to reach, bro, for you to be like, nigga, what type of fuck we... What type of, what type of, what type of, what type of oil you want, bro? Like, <laughs> like got Pick yo, yo, your And I'm not hating Did you on, have, like, a big trench coat with the oils and stuff? Like, <laughs> bro, like, I just want to... I'm not hating on anyone who does that job because I know how hard it took. Like there was good people that like worked at that job with me at Valve. Wait, actually, not really. <laughs> not that one. Not that specific one. They were like, all pieces of they shit. Were, they were all pieces of shit. Like, yeah, they, we we had like you know those ex cons and shit like that, whatever. But you know, it was right. It was all good. We all we all fucking hated each other, loved each other. It was all good. That's what my first job was. I worked with a lot of ex cons my first job, and I was just at Panera Bread. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of similarities between Valvoline and there, Panera there Bread. Like a, there was like a halfway house um, on the same street. My brother so. my brother was a manager of Panera. No he, he was doing that. In Watertown? Um, <laughs> no, he was in Boston Street. Oh, shit. Yeah, he was a big dog. Yeah, yeah. Like his big bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, big senior security <laughs> advisor. <laughs> you were a senior security advisor. Were you senior security advisor at a oh, school, wait. too? Hold on a second. I want to ask her oh. about something. I want to ask. Uh, um, What's up? So... This is my thing about Panera, and, and we, we, we will we will go on to your questions. This is we're gonna Panera ruin is. my sponsorship. <laughs> Panera and Truly are my two sponsors. We are purely sponsored by Bread Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> they play hip hop in Panera. You a fucking place? They don't play nothing. They play Alanis Morissette. You fucking bitch. That's, Fuck why he likes it so that's much how Panera. you salt. That's how you salt your soup. You just cry into it. <laughs> Th- this is my thing with Panera, yeah. right? Yeah. The option of the combo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now the- remember, this was ten years ago. I worked there. 
But okay, you she, pick two. She's already bailing. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> already bailing because she knows this is not worth talking about. Because <laughs> she's like, Panera was a piece of shit place to work at. <laughs> All those cars. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to leave you with that. I'm so, I won't even ask. <laughs> Don't bring back yeah, her you, repressed you memories. Can, you, you can ask. You can <laughs> ask. No, no, no. I felt like it was, it was r- I felt up an, Yeah, there was animosity <laughs> in the room. <laughs> like it was an ex boyfriend in there, too. <laughs> oh, Mixed for sure. <laughs> I got my ex and his best friend's jobs there. <laughs> <laughs> you called that shit. They used to throw pickles at my face and be like, ha, I got you the pickle. Could you not be so sexual, bro? <laughs> I know the vibes, bro. You know, though? I can, read the, vi- I can read the room, dog. You know it's pickle in the face? It's not a good work vibe. environment. <laughs> I was, I, I mean, I was just going to ask you about soup, but oh. that's fine. <laughs> Broccoli cheddar? <laughs> yeah, I was just literally going to ask you about soup. <laughs> What's up? But can, you were can, about lifestyle. I can, I, can, I can answer soup. Panera probably. brings out the worst in people. <laughs> like, apparently, jeez. Jesus, I just wanted to ask you about the ch- cheddar, ch- broccoli cheddar, for the broccoli cheddar soup. You know I stole some of that when I left. <laughs> you you better. You Why didn't you steal the recipe? Because it's better to t- lead a horse to the water, or whatever true. that stupid saying That's is. That's true. Than to yeah. Maybe that will be like my goal. Teach a man to fish. Boston that. tomorrow. Run in. No, steal you know the what recipe. you need. You, know, uh, this is <laughs> you could get a job in an hour at Panera. Oh, facts. Yeah, facts. This is my suggestion to you. Yeah. When you make it, because you will make it. Thank you. Um, you need to be. You need. You need to buy a franchise banana bread. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Just to be like, just to, just to say fuck you, bro. Only <laughs> like, playing hip hop and yeah. only <laughs> selling bread bowls and broccoli cheddar soup. That's it. Soup. That's it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me in there because I don't eat carbs anymore, yeah. and I listen to smoke. Alanis no. Morissette. Dude, she'll 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 have fucking you know anybody working there. <laughs> she'll like she'll you know she'll you know Panera will ask her like, hey, so what's our profit? She'd be like, go fuck. <laughs> this isn't for profit. <laughs> I get one of those Panera cares. You know, where you just pay what you can? Uh, you know, one of those? She'll have, like, an open yeah. mic, like, amateur strip club <laughs> night, like Monday nights at Panera. No, no open mic, just... <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, with a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Which I would definitely come for that show. Oh, like, that's the only show I'd come for. Yeah, our only beverages are, like, that green tea shit. Oh, I used to... L- I have that green tea, uh, Dunkin' Donuts green tea matcha, matcha latte. stuff. Like, I, I don't even know what the Panera I think we just. I think we just was. created a business plan Buying Panera, turning it into one time a week strip club with a podcast in the back while yeah. serving matcha. Yeah. And playing rap music. Yeah. And hip- it's a very you like, can't have you, you can't go to the rock strip club. I think I think I think <laughs> this is what I think. I think I think I think if people had to ask us what's our brand, yeah, I would respond by saying it's a niche market. Yeah. <laughs> it's a boutique. <laughs> this is a one and only pop up store. This is a store. boutique bakery. <laughs> exactly. Beautiful. I love it. Well, yeah. I'm glad that we all know what our future holds. <laughs> if comedy doesn't work out, we're we're franchising Panera. <laughs> I'm well. Yeah. I'll be fine. Yeah. I'm gu- I'm gonna just watch you guys and just I'm gonna I'm the guy that's like, <laughs> yo, I don't to a degree. I'm like, I'm the guy that's like, I'm not gonna buy the boat. I'm just gonna chill with the people who have a boat. Yeah. That's, all <laughs> that's I, feel. I live I on Cape Cod. I don't want my own boat. Those shits are expensive. <laughs> let yeah. me meet people with boats. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you be the ill ass director. Yeah. Ani will be like the fucking Panera Queen. That's <laughs> like and I'm gonna be like, yo, I know those people. Yo, can I can I visit and just Ping? let me just come to the house? <laughs> <laughs> let me just chill. <laughs> yeah, like, can I just chill? Yeah. Can we just can I just smoke a like a joint in your back we massive just backdrop? We pool? cater all those parties with Panera. <laughs> <laughs> That's all awesome. they do do that. catering. I You're know. right. All right, back. This That's is a, a self. This is a self help podcast, <laughs> yeah. Chase. We're not about funny stuff and laughter right. here. It's all good. It's all good. Bro. Everybody love everybody. No, but um, yeah. Comics to cure. You mm-hmm. did your first show fully funded yourself. Why did uh, not why like why help people? But what was your reason uh, the, behind yeah, the it? Intent, the intent behind comics to cure was because I said you know um, they just <clears throat> I felt like comics to me have the ability to cure really anything with laughter. In my opinion, you know what I'm saying. So, I really believe in that. Like that's my, I, I live by that. So, till this day. So, I was like, hey, if that's the case, then I want to be able to. I've always liked to like. I, I I don't know. I don't like to talk about it, but I do like to like give a lot to people who don't have much. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's like doing something for them or you know, not monetarily wise, but just like yeah. if I'm available. You know, like being on my podcast. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> give to the little people. No. Um, 
No, but anyways, long story short, I just you know I saw I uh, connected it. With, I connected it with the profits. I mean, of the show, like from ticket sales or any merch or whatever that we sold, we would um, donate uh, a portion of the proceeds to the uh, charity. Um, the first one was cystic fibrosis. Um, that was the first one. Why'd you choose? Um, there, was a, there was a uh, there was a there was a uh, group of uh, people that was working with me at the time that had a connection with that. So mm. yeah, so we just it wasn't like a personal connection. Um, I actually didn't really know anything. Really, I really didn't know anything about cystic fibrosis until I that was introduced to me, and then I learned about it. Oh which yeah, was, which was a great experience. So um, so that was the first one. But the but the main but the main one going forward. <clears throat> That was a nightmare fucking story with that for the first one too. What happened? Uh, which one? I got, oh, I lost money. I lost. T- I lost like one thousand. I lost twelve hundred dollars at cash. I had. Damn. You know, and I was paying comics like really good money, like you know, uh, absurd. I mean, not. I mean, it was good money. Yeah, absurd for the beginning. Yeah, and then uh, just because I was like, I want just people just to remember the show. I want to remember them to remember me. So. Uh, people who are there definitely remember. That's a great lineup. Yeah. So, uh, and then the second one, I upped the stakes. We upped the stakes. I met, that's when we met Randy, and then we were able to um, up elevate the show to bring in Donnell Rollins, who was on the Chappelle show, and he had that famous character, Ashley Larry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so that's my boy. That's my dude. And we, 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 were, we were able to bring him for three years straight to uh, Laugh Boston, which, you know, that's the circle back. That's how, yeah, that's yeah. how it started. And that's how it started, and, um, you know, sold out shows. You know, they as were independent amazed. producers, like yeah. you know, as two regular jump schmucks, you know, like selling out shows, you know, as an independent producer at a you know three hundred, four hundred club, you know. But you also both knew the business, you know, business, not the business. But that right. must did that help you? Do you think? Yeah, oh, 100 percent. Oh, living that other. Oh, I feel 100%, like percent, man. Yeah, you know, I was reaching out to radio stations for promo. Like I, I was the one. I, I there was no like. Yeah, I just never. Uh, I just take initiative and just try to I ask questions like you know I'm not afraid to ask questions and learn and learn that's yeah I think that might I did love comedy at an early age but I don't think I like lived enough of a life to have the stuff to say on stage yet of course but when do you feel like having a prior lives before stand-up helped you with your writing and with your do you think Oh yeah. Are you happy that you started later? Oh, but yeah. Uh, happy? I don't know. Uh, we will. We will yet to see. But <laughs> 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 it's, we'll see. I'll. Yeah. This, I mean, there are some things I want in life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that car. <laughs> you know that those Jordans. You know which. Uh, There's so much more that you have to give up when you're when you're doing something like this. You know, I feel like people aren't willing to give up those things for the success of comedy, for instance. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah, people live in the now; they <coughs> don't comedians, live. Comedians, uh, yeah. comedians, we um, people don't understand how much comedians sacrifice to to be what they want to be all the time, and have no remorse for who they are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. People think like a lot. Most people, I think, look at comedians. You know, they respect us. You know, because they, they know like it's hard to go on fucking talk in front of strangers that you've never met before. You know, and you have to convince them within twelve seconds that you're fucking funny before even them even getting to know you first. You know what yeah, I mean? And most times, you hate yourself before you're going up on stage. Like you're not like <laughs> yeah. But most people, like normal in like normal life, like you, you know, you have to be like respected first to even be able to have a sense of humor with your friends. Mm-hmm. Like. Mm-hmm. Because I bet there's certain things I can't say, but but you will say with your friends. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you know them as a friend. Like, yeah. Comedians were just like aliens, man. We're a bunch of fucking misfits. Yeah. Just so trying to figure to it out how to be relatable. Yeah, you like know? And you, like that. And you have to do it like, boom. Instantly. I didn't. I didn't connect <clears throat> with. That's why I went to the comedy clubs when I was 16. I didn't connect with anyone really until I found comedians, and I really was like, oh, now I understand other people think the same way I do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And we think, di- you know, we di- we think different, you know, a little bit, you know, outside the box. We're always, you know, pr- some of us are overthinkers, some of us are, you know, some of us are self, in- I mean, uh, in- like introverted, you know, some some are, you know, personable, like they can talk with anybody. We have a whole community of like different people, yeah. but they're they're still a comic. Like mm-hmm. there's like an underlying like connection with all of us. I would I would think like the way that you make connections with people, I think. Yeah, or the way that you observe people. Uh-huh. The way you observe, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, c- I didn't think about how I, bef- 
I being a comedian helped me to like understand how how understand, being a comedian has helped me tremendously how to think about life mm-hmm. like going forward as mm-hmm. like as a positive like self help person you know what I mean like yeah like because you look at things you know uh, a lot of people are very like um tunnel vision when it comes to like ideas Mm -hmm. you know they don't let ideas in you know because they have their own idea and they think like that's the best one or that's the like you know we can say thing about like religion that falls into that category too you know like people think their religion is the one it's like it's like what well you came four hundred got eight billion people (laughs) you're telling me one thing is the one you came from a pretty religious family didn't you (laughs) 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 yo dude yo son so Yo. you were you grew up with this kind of like people telling you how to live. Bro, so you didn't let me tell you something about my shit. First of all, I came from a very traditional culture, like conservative, orthodox, like you know what I'm saying? Like for real, for real. Like our shit was so conservative and like like in, in its views, like we couldn't find like our own church but like by our culture people, like the people that were from our country. So we were just like, all right, we're gonna go to uh we're gonna go to like a a Greek church. They're the mm-hmm. same as us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. No, they're not. Like, yeah, what? Like, <laughs> they're not even remotely <laughs> the same as us. <laughs> but like, no, but the ideas idea. are the same. So yeah, and we're one. It's like, ah, uh, what? They're strict too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you? That's talk? basically like saying like we grew up the same because I'm Armenian, so we grew up with like sort of the same oh, yeah. ideology. I think we've had this conversation. I think we have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think it's. Oh, maybe we haven't, but we just feel it. No, <laughs> like, I think because we have <laughs> because. Anyways, continue. Your yeah, yeah, I'll tell you why after. <laughs> but um, so I came from that, you know, and then my and then my parents ended up, you know, n- you know, they switched and became like, you know, really like more Christian than that, like for oh, real, wow. for real, like they doubled down. They doubled it up, son. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they were, uh, yeah, they came after. I think it was around 2004, right after we won the World Series in Boston. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were riding that train. They were like, <laughs> they said, "Fuck it!" Like we we just finally won the World Series for the first time. Let me change my religion again. <laughs> the, the curse is over. We're <laughs> we're doubling down. Yeah, on yeah this no one's shit. gonna say shit to us. Like, so, no more uh, Greek. But um, yeah. So I anyway, you know, they're, but it's all good though. You know, but Did now you, it's weird because now they you know, as they get older, they're becoming a little bit less liberal, but still conservative. It's so funny to see. Like, <laughs> it's so funny to see. Like. You're you're a, a grown person fighting with like two ideas of them. It's, like, <laughs> it's the best thing ever. <laughs> Did you follow it at a young age, or were you always kind of like, what, what's going on here? No, I mean I have faith. I believe in you know I believe in God. You know, well, you, I do think spirit. I, I have spirit. Yeah, I mean I'm, I'm a not, basic I, white bitch. I believe in spirituality that like there is a higher calling and that. Yeah, but you, you're missing the fucking mimosa in your hand while you're <laughs> that's, that's true. I do yoga every morning, so I think... <laughs> you're totally walking to yoga. I do yoga every morning, yeah. Like, namaste. <laughs> right. Yeah, kale is excellent or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, d- I fell in love with kale smoothies recently. Uh, kale life, hashtag oh. kale life or something. <laughs> you okay. leveled up, Sam. Um, but, no, I mean, yeah, I do believe, like, I, I mean, I just, you know, the type, of, the type of stuff personally I've been through and shit like that, like, I believe there's something, uh, but what it is, I don't know. But there's something, and then whatever. Um, did that affect your writing when you first started? Like, did you not want your parent? Like, d- were you like holding back what you wanted to say on stage because you didn't want certain things to get out? Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning, because you know you wanna, you know, you don't know what you're doing for the most part at all mm-hmm. when you're starting. Is I don't give a fuck. There's no one that could tell me that they hit it out the park the first time. Like. You know, I, there's a video of me oh. on Kill Tony. Oh. No, but I had a good. It was a one minute set, so it's not real. I had a good one minute, oh. and then I just bombed until now. Yeah, I'm still you bombing. Did. Just say you bombed. <laughs> <laughs> fucking just say you bombed. There's a up. fucking video of it. <laughs> no, don't, don't lighten up your bomb with your fucking one joke that worked. It was a one. Minute. <laughs> yeah, it was a single <laughs> minute just, joke. Just eat the whole bomb. <laughs> it makes you better. <laughs> <laughs> you don't be that comic that's like, yo, fucking yo, I hit that with that one joke though. The Right? <laughs> I got him on that one, right? No, bro, bomb. you fucking bomb, dog. Like, you know, like the one sweet. time I feel good All about time. myself, I'm just gonna dig myself deeper in that hole now. Yo, but I'm just saying you gotta. Yeah, be no, I, I do understand. Of, you just, you know, for me, I just. It was luck. I grew, it was. I mean, listen, man, I've had mentors that are like really like the type of mentors in comedy I've had. Uh, <laughs> I just it's just instilled in me like the way they like it's just how uh, it's like 
you know, now go up there and try to do your best, like for real, like on stage, man. Like people are paying fucking money to see you, you know. Like there's a lot of things that people are sacrificing right now to see us. Like go fucking do your job, you know. Like, and I'm not saying I'm not no fucking, you know. Trust me, I'm far from like Chappelle. Like I'm not trying to act like I, I don't know shit. But, but I have done some things. <laughs> like, you well, you've I mean? also so, stuck like, I, with it. So you stuck love with it. it. Yeah. yeah, and I love it. And I, and I see the real, like, really good people, like, better, way better than me fucking murderers, like, and how they operate and how they work. And it just, like, makes me want to be a better comic. But they see that in you, too. It's not like you're I just mean, like, like, like... Come on, you know. <laughs> like, I do got some dimples. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go back to talk about Randy? <laughs> 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 Sometimes a smile gets me places, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've definitely fucked chicks. I shouldn't have fucked based off just because of a smile alone. Just because of a smile. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I definitely helped out with girls way harder than me, but my smile is good. So <laughs> You're funny and you got a good smile. I guess. I think I'm, yeah. I want to gas you up since you knocked me down. That's no, I that's, that's down. I'm just kidding. Never no, I'm down. just. This is a positivity. Yeah, this is a positivity. <laughs> How is it? Okay. <laughs> Do you, have you been doing stand up? Since so you've been you're you're like you have shows coming up. Have you you've the done last show shows? I did was in um, last show the last show that I did was like in February, um, Feb- late February the last show I did, and then prior to that I was I was at the, did the Wilbur, and that's it. Congratulations! January. And then that's it. Like, and I did an open mic last week. For the first time in like four months or since March, since all this shit has happened, this coronavirus thing. Shout out Tony. There is a, you know, a virus going around, right, guys? <laughs> people forget about it. Yeah, <laughs> people forget that it's a pandemic. Just want to remind people. I, I, I didn't. I would have never thought I was in Southie the other day. Like you and I are six <laughs> feet apart in the studio. <laughs> I was in Southie last night. Exactly. I feel like I feel like the people really know where to go mm-hmm. to, like you know, get. I will say that uh, most people had masks on and were staying six feet apart. Oh, yeah, they were. I was in yeah. New Hampshire and uh, I oh. went into a convenience store with a mask on. I was up there for my first show back. Uh, shout out Pete Andrews. And um, that goes back to your pilgrimage of uh, just let, let me go straight to New Hampshire where they really don't <laughs> give a fuck about exactly. anything. Well, I wore my mask into the convenience store and every like six people gave me a dirty look. Because you Because I was wearing a mask. In New Hampshire, they're like, fuck you for wearing a mask. It's live free or die. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so I'm You know what? Like I just canceled. I wanna do a movie with that with a can, can you make an anthem with that song, please? Can you can, I feel like you know somebody that can make an anthem, live free or die. I just wanna live for Irish. Where's Irish? Get him in here. I wanna be in a, I, I did tell uh, him to come in here. I wanna be I wanna be I wanna be in a movie that uh that just plays that in the background. <laughs> live for your yes. live free or, or die. die. <laughs> yes. And just me and you <laughs> just like just clapping our hands. Oh, can we do like one of those like freeze frame high fives at the end? Because uh, I feel like that's what we'll have to play for live the, free or die. Bro, you're the director. You can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> like, I, I'm, oh, my, actually, you're not my the dreams you're were slacking. crushed. Yeah. I don't, I don't. Yeah, you're fucking pussy. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's if people let's, let, no listen, but for real sh- real shit though. Like this, this, uh, you got to be able to take like punches in the face, man. One hundred percent. Like for real. Like you, you got to be. You got to be very. Can't get offended. Can't get offended, man. You got to be able to like. If you're offended by words, and you want, you're trying to be a comedian or in the entertainment business, and you're offended by just by nah, man. You better like get a tough skin because there's this business is built to break you down. Or if you get offended by bombing, like if you bomb and you're like the audience fucking sucked. Like I like no, you have to be able to eat your bad sets and live with them and be like I sucked. It was my fault. Yeah, exactly. And you and gotta be, do that night after night, yeah. like and and be and and yep, I agree with you. And also be able to and have people share the same opinion of you if it's for like the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't be like, oh, you shouldn't, you don't tell me that. Don't tell me I sucked. Like, what are you trying to tell me? Like, no, you fucking bombed. Like, I'm telling you as a comedian, because I don't want you to bomb. Because if you bomb, then I have to fucking come up and bring them up. So mm-hmm. I want to, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. everyone is just do your, just try to do the best, man. And if you're not good, ultimately you're not good. Like, I'm not saying just because you're going to do it for, you, you, you do get better, like, as you keep doing it. But there's no guarantee you're going to be fucking, you know what I mean? Like. I just you just gotta just love it. Reactionary people are too when they're offended. But it's also yeah, it's about the work. It's about the work that you really do put in. I I as I 
I don't know anything about sports, but I was watching that last dance, the Michael Jordan you documentary. Ask me anytime. You see my body? <laughs> Look at me, dude. I'm fucking built like a fire hydrant. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's so weird. Like, I'm, I have traps like, where you're just like, yo, that dude has... He works out, but then you look at my roundness. You're like, how the fuck does he have good traps, but he's just round? Like that's I'm like, built like Big Bird. Is that just me? So Am I like, thinking like it's that, all bro? Good. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm always like everyone. You, you just was like went straight to your <laughs> shit. I'm like, I want an answer. I don't want to make you feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. No, I want no. the truth, bro. Like you, you I'm do. I'm not fucking easily offended by my. You, traps. you can flex on camera. Bro, when I'm, a- you know what I asked you, bro? I asked you if my traps are okay. Does my body match? Does my body match my traps, bro? <laughs> yes, it does. That's an easy tra- fucking yes. answer to the question, bro. Yes or no? Like, yes, like, oh. your traps match your body. You got. Thank you, dog. Fuck my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Have you been working now out? Now proceed. Over- <laughs> Have you been working out over quarantine? Have you been trying to, or are you? Obviously, bro. Look at my traps. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he asked in the first place. That's why he's so obsessed with. I'm working every day on my goddamn traps. I'm trapping. Is that what? He stupid? bees in the trap. No, please, please leave. It's all about elevating, man. <laughs> it's, it's elevate, bro. <laughs> what are we saying? No, no, proceed. I don't know what the fuck he was asking me. I, Have I, you got, been I got caught in the in the in the. You're in the, in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Lost in the sauce. Caught in the trap. No, I think what I was just saying I was piggybacking what uh, what she said. I said, uh, yeah, you just gotta be able to, you know, you gotta you can't be offended. You can't like, you just gotta be able to take mad punches to the face mm-hmm. and like literally just like say fuck it, like you know. Rodney Dangerfield, I heard uh, he said he told uh, I was actually Bob, you know Bob Saget, the comedian Bob yes, Saget, I right? I listened to the podcast with Joe Rogan. Oh, that was a great podcast. You listened to it? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and he said something about Rod- Rodney Dangerfield that stuck with me. He said that, uh, he's like, uh, he told um, Bob Saget, you know, hey, just, you know, this fucking business, you got to go like a tank. You got to go just run him over like a tank. You got to not just give a fuck. You know, they, this business is built to break you down. You know, you got to just not give a fuck. You know what I mean? You know, get out of here. You got to just roll like, you got to be like a tank. Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm like, holy shit. I'm like eight years in the game, and I'm like, oh, I felt like nothing. I haven't even started anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just have to kind of like have that consistent like work ethic of being like, just stay consistent. Just keep doing it. You're just doing that with the podcast too. The podcast, yeah. We ready, we, set, blow. We never missed an episode in four almost four years. You that's you're just rolling like a, a tank. week, a week actually. Well, I'm that's sorry, a week on my because f- it comes out every week. So on my fourth episode, I had a clip that it didn't go by. I just had a couple thousand views, and um, there was a a lot of hate. Uh, I got there was a comment on Reddit that was like, "Fuck these podcasters." And what, that some, was from some fucking person from Sweden. Exactly. Like, but it's like, like, like I feel like, like, like that, you that, that, that works at fucking not even a Chipotle, but a make believe Chipotle. It works at Kidoba. Yeah, not even fuck Kidoba. Not even Kidoba. Like they just work, you know, Moe's. So. <laughs> <Like, laughs> I'm going to name all the burrito places. <laughs> because you just listen, man. Yeah, it's just like the whole no, but it's like, who cares? You yeah. just you got to be able to take the punches in the face and roll with them. Yeah. Uh, it, it and doesn't something's going to happen. Something will happen that's going to be fucked up. Like, it's bound to happen. Like, yeah, I was thinking this. I'm 23. My rock bottom isn't even close to come yet. And I'm like, fuck. My, li- I, my rock bottom is like five, six years away. And I'm like, shit. Yeah. Like, damn, I'm, I'm not ready to go. <laughs> I uh, thought rock bottom already hit. I got farther but down But you know what's go? dope, though, bro? You know what's dope? You know what's dope? By, by, by thinking that way, you know what's dope? That you'll be ready to handle it by that time because your consistent work ethic through stand-up has built you to the level, mm-hmm. hopefully, that you'll be like, pfft. Man, I could take anything right now. You know, if my mom died tomorrow, psh, whew, it's tough. Fuck. Yeah. But it maybe it may make you tough. You know what I'm saying? Like stand up, you gotta be tough mentally and physically. Yeah. Like you just gotta be able to physically. Take you know, it's a physical thing too. You gotta go out every day, every night. You know, for years. <laughs> like, do you work on your like, mental? What? You know, huh? Do you work at your on your mental at all? Like, I I'm pretty big into meditating, and I think that helps nah, me. I just do porn. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm you an American. That? What the fuck is that, dude? I'm a. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Do you know bro? how lazy I am? I didn't even <laughs> sign up for premium you, when it was do, free. What do you fucking listen to? Fucking Zen music on YouTube while you're fucking. Yeah, I, I download an app and downward I, doggy. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> I meditate and do yoga every morning, and I drink matcha. I'm a real basic <laughs> white bitch. <laughs> no, dude, I just if I want to get mentally just I just fucking. Porn, bro. Okay. Like, <laughs> All right, so you don't no, work no, on no, your I'm mental. You I'm don't work no, on I your do. mental. I do. You have to. I work yeah. on it every day. 
right before I get mad, you know, I take a deep breath, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I, you have to, it's a, wor working on your mental is a, an everyday thing. It's not, you know, when things get tough and now you have to build yourself, you know, everything's preparation for me. Yeah. Preparation is life. Like if you could, if you could just better prepare yourself for something to happen, even though it may not go the way you want, at least you fucking are preparing for it. You feel me? Like, so I don't know. Things are going to happen the way it's going to happen, but I'll be mentally prepared. Hopefully. Do you think deal with that shit? But do you think the finance game helped you in that? Like when you're losing money, like when it's worse than like, if you bomb a set, you know, if you bomb a set, it'll fuck up your mental. Yeah, but well, like, that's what I thought before. But like now money to me is nothing. Like it's not really a thing to me. Like I like money. You know, you see my swag. You see my came here, the new drippies on my feet. I saw them. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I don't have to tell you like, you know what I'm saying? Shit's just, you know, I'm not rich by any means, but <laughs> daddy's living good. You son. were talking about your <laughs> you were talking about your crib. Coco's living good, son. <laughs> Coco's good, son. But but money's yeah, money's not a thing. But that's man. because you follow do you think that's because you followed your dream and money followed you instead of when well, you were chasing after money, it wasn't... Well, it, it was a combination of me like having money at one point and then fucking spending it and losing it, doing it again, spending it. Just this whole hamster wheel of like not having a fucking path for anything. Just like, you know, yeah, I'm getting a thousand dollars this week. Oh, I'm about to blow 500 of it of like, you know, going out to the club. You know, like I... I had another life, bro. I have Yeezys. I Sorry, you're bringing me back. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're having. I saw though that so Raven flashback. In yeah, your yeah eyes. Flashback, but yeah, but then it teaches you like, damn. I now, I've been, but then, bro, straight up, this is straight up and down. I've been fucking homeless, dog. At one point, like, you know, just because of my fucking shit that I just stupid shit I was doing. You know what I mean? Like, I lived in a storage facility for three months. Damn. Like. I was a. I ended up getting a job as a manager there. I had nowhere to go. At one point, I, I got must have something happened with my previous um, house or roommate. Something I got kicked out. Well, it was a fight. It was a long story. He smelled too much like kale. <laughs> but fucking. Um, are you are you talking about me? <laughs> he. Uh, but yeah, I was fucking. I didn't have a place to go, bro. I had a. So I just slept in the fucking storage facility for That's like three months. Kind of resourceful though. You know, I mean, I mean, you like do what you gotta should do. Should have set up a podcast I studio. I had a scooter. <laughs> I had a scooter. Fucking went to showers at the gym. Come back, sleep, save money to get for like three months to get my place. Another split. Yo, you gotta do whatever the fuck you gotta do. You hustled. Like, and look you at where you like, are now. I'm, here, no ex I'm just not that type of dude to hear excuse. I, I, I yeah. get it, bro. Life is hard. I'm a refugee, bro. I came from Africa. My parents are refugee East Africans, bro. I know what fucking the, what the aftermath of war smells like and the aftermath of what it does to a family. Real war. Like, you here in this country, there's an opportunity, bro. Go fucking get it, dog. Like, don't... And I... It's maybe... I'm so confident in that conviction because of the sh type of shit I've been through so that I believe in it so much. Maybe it comes off as like, you know... Who's this fucking guy? I think he could tell me, <laughs> like whatever. But it's, what I'm saying is, there's so much better on the other side if you just really, if you give it 110. percent Was that something you know, you that have was to earn it? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you really have to, you have really have to like I just I just go after what you what, go after what makes you happy, and whatever comes, you know, money comes, you know, but your true happiness comes, you know, like. You think Joe Rogan fucking ever thought like his podcast would be reached to the point where he would point? You know how many fucking haters was on his side uh, uh, talking about him like. He just got the big. He just changed the game. The dude changed the game. There's certain people in like l generations like actually changed the game. Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Michael Jackson, <laughs> Bobby Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that That's list. That list was going. <laughs> that was going somewhere dark. <laughs> what was happening to that list? It's my prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> was that something that was instilled in you at an early age, or was that something that you learned as you kind of grew up? That was like as you got older. That was instilled. In me. I, I've I always my parents always instilled in me that we we came from nothing, so be appreciative of what you have. From the point mm -hmm. I came here, son, to like I'm till now, they remind me of where we came from. Like so, be appreciative of like what you got. You know, you didn't finish yeah. college. You fucked up. We didn't fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you didn't. You know, whatever. Like you got you got a DUI, IUI. You got you fucked up. You know, you luckily you're still alive. Mm -hmm. 
but you fucked up. Like own your account, like take accountability for yourself. You know what yeah, saying? you can't. Yeah, that's um extreme ownership. That's kind of what I the extreme ownership of yourself. And it, and it comes off on stage too. I'm telling you, man. The audience knows, man. If you're for real, if you like, if you're real, you know what you're talking about is really you. The they audience knows if you're trying to make yourself laugh or if you're just reciting the they, stuff. Yeah, they like you have it. to go up there and enjoy yourself, even if you're having. Honestly, yeah. when I have real shit days, like if I have get a real like, mm-hmm. I have a good set that night. Like I have a little bit of like momentum, a little bit. I this is something that I want to make myself feel better, and if I do that, then the audience is automatically gonna feel better. Yeah. But I'm not gonna like Joey Diaz used to talk about how he like would get himself angry before he gets on stage, but I don't like getting myself angry before I get mm-hmm. on stage. But I do need a little bit of like, come on, like this yeah. is the fucking this time. Is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hype, you gotta. Yeah. Of course. This, you need this, a hype man. You know, you gotta, well, yeah, you gotta. You have to, in my opinion, have to be your best hype man. Mm-hmm. Like, but if you got other people around you, that's what's up. You see, in the future, I feel like this is a problem with comedians, and something that I'm learned is like we're very in the now people, mm-hmm. but you can't really grow if you're always in the now. You also have to like know what plan you have ahead yeah, of you. I mean, partially, yeah, but sometimes you reach. Listen, man, everybody reaches their points at different times. Not everybody reaches, the, you know, the same. When you start, when you first do comedy, and then when you finish doing comedy, you're you're a totally different person. Like th- you can't you can't tell me otherwise. Like you're not the same person. You ever take any time off? What do you mean from like comedy work? from stand up? <laughs> like, what is well, time you never off? took time off, you like. never took you <laughs> no. never took time off. Oh yeah, on your, oh, for sure, for sure, hundred percent. But I, your podcast for four years. No, the you podcast for, we didn't take time. But mentally, I had take t- I've taken two months off before, three months off. I believe in breaks. Mm-hmm. Like, don't push yourself to the point where you're now you're just thinking about Twinkies every day. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you, like what? Like, you know, don't don't self sabotage your. That happened to me. You know, like it happens to a lot of comedians. You saw me at the start. studio. That's I think one time. It's called the Boston Comedy Page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You, you know? can't. <laughs> you saw me at the studio once, I think, and I, I didn't have a bad set, but it was at a point where I was working 50 hours a week. I was oh, in yeah. a long distance relationship, and I was driving from Cape Cod to Boston to do stand up. That's, that's three full time jobs. It was too, too much, and I was, yeah. I was like taking it out on myself. Like I wasn't eating healthy. I wasn't. Yeah. I was drinking too much, and then I realized, okay, I really like. You can focus your life and mold it into whatever you really want it yeah, to be. Man. Like you can yeah. fucking you've done that. You talk about that. Like you you meld molded your life into what you want it to be. You didn't try to chase anything. Nah. And I it known. all followed you. When you make your own lane in the universe, yeah. the universe makes its own lane for you. It makes it, it just it just creates th- it, it just creates things create itself. Mm-hmm. As long as you, I just try to focus on man what I can control. And those, and that's just my actions. Like I can't control other people's what well, I can't control other people's perception of me, but I can do the best I can by being a good person, so they have a good perception of me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't get into thinking about what people think about me by saying this. I I'm just being me, and then you know, you just gotta be a good person every day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then hopefully people ride with you. You know, you know. But in this business, it doesn't. You can be. I told you can you can know somebody for fifteen years in this business, and then as soon as they fu- they they've been great for you for fifteen years, as soon as they do something one th- I think one thing, you're like, oh fuck that guy, uh, I'm going with this fucking agent, you know, I'm going. It's like they just ho- loyalty and integrity is like big for me, you know what I'm saying? 100%. So it's like you know I'm not I'm not in I'm not in this to make like friends to be cool, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm nah, like you create friends by being a good person, like you know, and then you know, and then from there you le- you get you lead you create opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. So. Now it's like people will just want opportunities, but they don't want like they just but they haven't <laughs> done anything. It's just like yeah. it's like it's just come on, you just you know get, get tighten up because the train's going. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying. If you ain't here, someone else is right behind you, younger, more more. You know, it's so like if you if you don't if you want if you want it, what are you willing to sacrifice for it? Yeah, you know I mean, like, you have to that's be. All I'm saying, like, <laughs> is your internal monologue mean or is it nice? I'm real tough on myself. The My f- in- what? What you just asked me? <laughs> this is a self help podcast. We talk about f- spiritual. Bro, you be a- <laughs> <laughs>
his like trajectory of segways has been crazy since I came to this house. You've been doing four years of podcasting. He's done like four <laughs> episodes of podcasting. No, no, that's not, no, that's not that. It's I get that math, yeah. but but. It's the it's the it's the t- it's the quality <laughs> of the fucking the top like the the, the turn it's like it's, such a short one. it's just a, the, the turn needs to be rounded a little bit. You're, you're Sam's take- gonna have the best the best yeah. transitions after this episode. He's like, I'm, I'm never gonna do that again. Oh, jeez, gonna you're, gonna, go you're gonna roll over a lot of cars in your life. Why are you just around? moving farther and farther to the left? Jeez. You're just moving down the table as the podcast <laughs> okay, goes on. So. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken if I'm not mistaken, let me just reiterate what came in my brain. <laughs> okay, right? all right. What came out of my mouth into you your brain? You asked me. Yeah. <laughs> you asked me allegedly. <laughs> alleged allegedly. What does your voice sound like? <laughs> I know. Pause for real. What, my nigga? <laughs> That's not what I asked. I said, like, is your internal monologue, not, like, what, is it mean or nice? Do you Are you mean to yourself in your mind, or are you nice to yourself? Like, good job. Or are you like, come on, bitch. I'm going to push you fucking farther. <sighs> so many questions I have right now. <laughs> that is not your answer. Like, Do I you feel use like, Squarespace? I feel like we need to dig in <laughs> way more. Th- way, I think we need to dig in another. We have to. I feel like there's something... We have to talk about something, bro. I don't know what it is, bro, but like, the okay. No, I'm I'm a pretty positive person to myself. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I talk to myself. Fuck yeah, you got to. I mean, come on, you gotta be. I talk to myself all the time, you know, because I'm the only one that's willing to listen sometimes. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people that, that that's another thing too. There's a problem too. People don't actively listen anymore. You know, they just want to get straight to the point without listening to people. So you have to be. If this is my formula to being just a fucking good person in general, and then hopefully that leads to like good business and being a good, you know, um, performer mm-hmm. and entertainer. Take accountability for yourself. Work hard. You know, stay away from the drama bullshit. Be loyal. Have integrity. And roll the dice. I I would bet I would bet that you you'll end up with a good life. You know, so. And I think that's the perfect place to end. Thank you very much for being on Bucked Up, Chase. For Do so you want to um, give any plugs before we end up? Uh, yeah, you could, I mean, if you could check me out. I'm uh, at Chase Able on Instagram, um, at Chase Able One, um, at Twitter. Um, I have a podcast with my boy. We talked about my boy Randy Valerio uh, at Ready Set Blow Podcast. Such a funny podcast. Um, yeah, with you know, conversational guys, unedited, unfiltered. You know cut from two different worlds but just kind of just saying you know fuck everything and just let's talk things out you know and um yeah so yeah instagram is my main thing you know and um send me dms you know of uh places that you like to eat because i like to eat a lot so <laughs> your favorite places of where you are because every city that i come to i just want to get fat <laughs> and, and, and and tell jokes and get drunk <laughs> and have fun <laughs> with cool people so that's yeah so, so appreciate you I don't know why I just sounded like as if I'm I'm Barry White. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I I don't know. You have that music. It's like, yeah. Your your traps (laughs) match your body. I just wanted to to end by saying your traps do match your body. I knew it. (laughs) You knew it from the beginning. From the beginning. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone.